So, so in this example problem, we're going to use the method of joints to determine the force within the three truss members within this truss. So we have the truss member from point A to point B, we have the truss member from point B to point C, and we have the truss member from point A to point C. All right, so we want to figure out what is the force within AB, the force within BC, and the force within uh, AC. All right, so that's our goal of this problem here. All right. So the first step we need to do when using the method of joints is we need to try to identify a joint with one known force, at least one known force, and at most two unknown forces. So this was the same truss as we had in the previous video. So if we look at it, we know that at joint B, we have one known force and we have two unknown forces. All right, so we're gonna use joint B first and then we'll go to joint C and then we'll go to joint A last to solve for all of our uh, components. All right, so if we go to so we're going to first draw our free body diagram at B. All right, so we'll draw our free body diagram at B. All right, so we know at B that we have a 500 Newton force that's going along the x-axis. All right, we know that we have a force that will go along uh, member AB. All right, we'll call it FAB. And then we'll have another force that will go along the member FBC. All right, and because we know that this is a triangular truss, we know that there'll be a 45 degree angle that separates member AB and member BC. So we can write this as being a 45 degree angle. All right, so so the one thing I want to iterate here is that uh, we don't know the directions of our forces. We, they can either be in tension or they can be in compression. So a tensile force would be coming out of our uh, free body, out of our pin here, or uh, a compression force would be going into our pin at B. So based off of the information. Uh, that we're given, we know that we have a known force that's going along the positive x-axis and it'll be in 500 uh, newtons. So we know that there has to be a net force acting on this pin of zero newtons in the x-direction. So we know that uh, member AB is along the positive y-axis so we can't have, um, so FAB will not have any component in the y-direction. So therefore, the only member that is capable of counteracting that 500 Newton force would be member BC. So the force within BC would have to apply a force into the joint that could counteract that 500 Newton load. All right, so we'll draw FBC going into our joint. All right, then force AB, because force BC is now applying a a vertical component along the y-axis, we could then say that FAB would have to be going down in the, along the negative y-axis. All right, so that is how we can determine the orientation of our forces. All right. So once we get to that point, uh, the, these problems become pretty simple. All you do is you just use your equilibrium equation. So we'll start with the x equation. All right, so we since that's where our known force is in. So we say that the sum of all our forces is equal to zero. All right, so we'll say that's equal to our 500 Newton force minus FBC times the sine of 45 degrees. All right, so we can go ahead and rearrange this equation and we can say that 
FBC would be equal to 500 newtons divided by radical 2 over 2, all right, which would be equal to 707.1 newtons. So with that information, what we can then do is we can sum all of our forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero, which would be equal to minus FAB plus FBC times the cosine of 45 degrees. All right, if we move FAB to the other side of our equation, you would get uh, 707.1 newtons times radical 2 over 2, which would give us 500 newtons. Cool. All right. So our next, uh, what we'll then do from here is we now know the forces within members BC and AB. So what we can now do is we can go to another joint. So we'll go to joint C. This joint C has less components that uh, are less members going into it. And remember, we need a joint that has one known force and two unknown forces. So member joint C uh, has that condition. So we'll go to joint joint uh, joint C. So we're going to draw our free body diagram at joint C. Alright, so we have, alright, uh, use a, a dot here. So we know at joint C we'll have a force that will be due to uh, AC, the, the force within member AC. Um, we'll have a force due to member BC. Alright. Right. And we will have a force due to the reaction of the rocker joint. So we'll say we'll have a normal force due to C. All right. And that will act perpendicular with the ground. All right. So in this case, it will go along the Y axis. All right. So for uh, force BC, what you should do in these problems is that you notice that force BC was pushing into the joint at B. So what we need to do is that the, on the opposite side of the, uh, or on the opposite side of the uh, the member, it will be uh, point. The force should be going in the opposite direction that we have in long here. All right. So it should still the member BC is in compression so it should remain in compression regardless of which joint we're looking at here so it remains in compression all right which we figured saw we found out from this from the free body diagram at point at b therefore it would still be in compression in our free body diagram at joint c all right and it would be at a 45 degree angle from the negative x axis all right so since we know this force here all right, we know that FBC is also equal to 707.1 newtons. All right, we can, we would know that FAC would have to be going, be in tension, and it would have to be going along the negative uh, x axis in order for the sum of all the forces in the x direction to be equal to zero. And we know that our normal force at C would also have to be going positive, which it is. Uh, in order to balance out the y component of the force FBC. So we can use our equilibrium equations again. So we'll say that the sum of all the forces in the x direction is equal to zero. All right, and that is going to be equal to minus FAC plus 707.1 newtons times uh, the cosine of 45 degrees. All right. So that would give us FAC would be equal to 500 newtons, all right? 
right? and then we can do the same thing with the sum of all the forces in the y direction to solve for our normal force NC so if we do that we would get uh, NC minus 707.1 newtons times the sine of 45 degrees all right uh, and then that would give us NC would be equal to 500 newtons right. so our last joint in the problem uh, would be at point A so we already have solved for uh, the forces within each of the truss members but often you're asked doing these types of problems to solve for the reactions at all the joints so we'll do we'll just add this one additional step here so now if we ha look at our free body diagram at point A alright what we'll have is we'll have the force due to uh, along uh, AB so we'll have force AB alright it's drawn going in the opposite direction as it is drawn in the free body diagram at point B alright so it'll be going along the positive y axis alright we know that this is equal to 500 newtons we will have our force AC alright we know that that will be equal to 500 newtons and then we have our two uh, reaction forces will have a x and we'll have a y here so we'll just apply our equilibrium equations one last time to solve for f a x and a y so we'll say that the sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to zero that would be equal to a x plus 500 newtons all right, so we would say AX would be have to be equal to negative 500 newtons. All right, and then if we sum all of our forces in the Y direction, is that that equal to zero? It would be equal to uh, it would be equal to uh, AY plus 500 newtons. So you would get AY would be equal to negative 500 newtons. Right. So one quick thing you can do here uh, to check uh, after you do all these steps to kind of check if you're if you're getting the right uh, problem here is you can treat your truss as being just the rigid body. So if we just pretend our truss is just a, a big triangle, all right. And we applied a 500 newton load to it, and we had it was had a roller at B, and it had a pin at A. All right, we can use our reaction forces. We can draw all of our reaction forces out on this free body diagram. All right, so we have and what you'll notice is that if you if you summed all the forces in the x direction, you would get zero. You would get 500 minus 500. All right, if you summed all the forces in the y direction, you would also get zero. You would get uh, 500 newtons minus 500 newtons. All right, and then if you summed the moments, let's say we'll sum the moment about point A and set that equal to zero, what you would get is you would get 500 newtons times two meters. All right, the sides of these this triangle is two meters. All right. All right, and then you would that would be due to the reaction force at A, but you'd also get um, a negative moment due to the 500 newton force that's applied at point B. All right, so you would get 1,000 newton meters minus 1,000 newton meters. So our structure is in equilibrium. All right, so.
So all this is, is we're applying the lessons that we learned in chapters three and chapters five to trusses. All right, so that concludes this video. Uh, and uh, we'll go on to the next example problem.